Welcome back, Troglodytes, to another episode of Trogly's Guitars. Today we have a beautiful 1986 Gibson SG-62 reissue that they did in the late 80s. All is right again in the Trogly's Guitars world. I sold that JMP-1C, instant regret, and my new one came in today. So we can start doing these again. If you noticed, I've been kind of doing some filler content, editing some old videos, because none of the amps I had pleased me. It just, the sound, it sounded good, like, in person, but once I went to record, it just sounded like wet farts. So I kind of had to hold off on these video tour demos, but we're all good again. I've got the classic amps back, and we're demoing a classic Gibson SG today. Late 50s, early 60s, the Les Paul shape goes away, and they come back with this. They call it a Les Paul. This is basically the first time that Gibson reissued this. They call this one the 62 reissue. This one's had some change parts. It is a player's grade guitar, but it is an excellent player. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this guitar. So the headstock here, you can see the beautiful Gibson prehistoric logo. Now these SGs never got an official prehistoric reissue in the form of like an inked serial number. However, so this is what the SG prehistorics look like. They have the very identifiable prehistoric Gibson logo. You can see the G's a little bit collapsed on itself. It's just a little goofy looking, but that is the logo that I love from the late 80s, early 90s. You can see you have the crown. I like to call that the frog. It's a beautiful little headstock here. Now this truss rod cover is not stock. It's very common for people to put those on to give them a more historic vibe. This originally would have came with a blank truss rod cover, but I'm guessing this is some sort of historic spec Les Paul. You can see on the headstock here, there's quite a few string change scratches. There's uh, some shrinking around the Gibson logo as these always have. But overall, the headstock's not in too bad of shape, but definitely shows some wear and tear. Along the sides here, you can see some very light finish chipping. That's uh, probably because it was hanging on a stand like this. It's in those exact areas. The treble side's not as bad as the bass side. You got a little bit missing there. But overall, awesome. This one has its stock factory nut. Uh, frets show very light wear. It's definitely still very playable and a very cool player. You got the beautiful inlays on them. They're very crystalline looking. Uh, I love these uh, 80s fretboards. They always look great. So beautiful dark rosewood. I just oiled it, cleaned the frets. Very slim, fast 60s profile neck, as these are known for. Onto the body here, a gorgeous cherry red. I mean, when I think an SG, this is pretty much what I think of. Uh, if you're looking for more of a reissue, I would highly suggest one of these prehistoric ones. Uh, the modern day 61 reissues and Derek Trucks guitars are pretty good, but there's something about these. They're very classic, they're you know a little bit older. There's just something magical about these guitars. Now being a very late 86, these have the original pickups and it can kind of vary with what you get. Early, very late 87 is kind of when the, uh, the originals start coming out. So these either have very old Tim Shaw's in them because that's exactly what they look like, but I think they might be more correctly called the P490. Um, Reading up on guitar forums, that's kind of what replaced the Tim Shaw's for a very little bit. They're not exactly the same, but very similar. I think that's what's in here. It's either that or Tim Shaw's. No matter what they are, they sound awesome. Uh, you have stock ABR1 bridge on these, and it's kind of a cool nickel hardware look. It's got that agedness to it that you love. I mean, I'll get a close up here. So it's not that shiny chrome. It definitely has a very cool vintage vibe. You have the awesome little top hat knobs with inserts. They've aged themselves quite nicely, as you can see there. And this is just a really solid playing guitar. I mean, it's definitely been played. I mean, we'll run the light over here so you can see all the scratches and nicks and dings and all that. But it's got the nice bevel to the body. The horns are nice and pointy. I mean, th these are very special SGs. So if you're in the market, I would definitely suggest checking one of these late 80s, early 90s ones out. 
Uh, condition wise on the front you've got kind of some scratches in this area and just average play wear but overall the front is not too bad you got some small dings over here as well but a great player got some uh, edge wear right here back of the headstock serial number it looks like 82 79 65 61 made in usa that makes it a 1986 fairly late in the year you have your replaced tuners this is the exact same style that would have came on here um, except for these are Schaller instead of Gibson Deluxe. You can see that little S there, the Schaller brand. You do have some scratches here on the back of the headstock, as you can see. But overall, I mean, it's not in too bad a shape. Once again, slim 60s neck profile, very comfortable. You've got some, obviously, handling wear, because I just got done playing this little girl. And does she scream? So some smudges, I mean, most of that would clean off. Oh, I'll probably have to it off myself. I've been playing this guitar for a couple hours. I really do enjoy this one. Now SGs, you've got to be careful not only of headstock repairs but of heel repairs. Thankfully this one has had no repairs of any kind but definitely be careful buying used SGs. There's some buckle indentations here and uh, handling marks, some light buckle rash but overall I mean this thing's a player. You don't have to be scared to play this one, but it doesn't look completely trashed either. I mean, it's original for the most part. I mean, you have your original electronics, which is what you want, but obviously the upgraded tuners improve tuning stability. At first, when I put new strings on it, it was a little iffy, but you know, after I tuned it up two or three times, I was amazed because I sat it down for a couple hours. I picked it up. I had actually forgotten to retune before recording. Thankfully, they held tuned, so placement tuner is definitely good on this one overall i mean these late 80s sg standard 61 reissues 62 reissues they're they're fantastic guitars uh, surprisingly these go for less than the regular standards of the day so as of right now on the market these are actually a very good deal we'll take a look under black light here you can see there is some light chipping around the headstocks logo there but that is fairly common to see it's not like spreading or anything so everything's stable up here as you can see some edge wear and whatnot but no breaks cracks or repairs thankfully on to looking at the body everything's glowing the way it should you've got some clear coat wear there that's kind of where your arm rests very common once again and the beautiful glowing knobs and no funny words on this one like that SG custom back of the headstock everything else is good as well once again replace tuners now on the back of the neck here you can see some very minor clear coat wear here but I mean I think that really adds to why this guitar is so easy to play it feels a little bit more worn in but it doesn't have like finish worn off the neck Obviously under blacklight you can see there is some clear coat worn off, but you definitely still have all the finish intact. Back of the guitar, great shape as well. Just once again some edge wear from playing. No major, you know, nicks and dings into the guitar. Heel pocket's good. You can see uh, the average, you know, wear and tear around there as well, but no breaks, cracks, or repairs. There's a pretty sizable ding there on the uh, bass side horn. But overall, I mean, it's just, this is exactly the condition of guitars that I like. You know, a little bit worn in, but well respected. This one's a really good weight at six pounds, 10.1 ounces. This guitar comes in a non-original Gibson case. This is kind of what you'll see around the mid 70s, 75. It's not a perfect fit, but it is a vintage case, but not the original one. You got one, two, three, and four latches, and a functioning handle. And you can see there's quite a bit of wear on the outside. Nothing really structural that you have to worry about. You still have the Gibson logo and all that. Inside is a beautiful red color. You can see the uh, linings kind of coming off towards the bottom. And. Uh, the pull tab here is a little bit worn. And the tuners have worn away some of the interior there, which is very common. And it's always on that side too, but it does its job. I mean, if you're gonna gig this guitar, will this case work? Yes. Do you want maybe a little bit more protective of a case? Yeah, probably. The thing with these is if you've never felt one, 
and you've had like one of the vintage chipboard cases, imagine one of the chipboard cases but with a harder exterior. I mean, it's still hard shell, but it's not, you know, SKB hard shell. Show you the fit of the case. You can see there's some extra room there, but it kind of hugs on that side over here, so that extra room isn't necessarily bad. Uh, back and forth, with just a little bit of pressure, it doesn't move, but if you have a lot of pressure, then it will. So I think when you're carrying it, what'll end up happening is it'll slump to one side, and then it'll be safe, because it kind of hugs it in this corner. Because up and down, it doesn't move too much, because, well, there's not too much room up there. So, it's not a perfect case, but it's a vintage case that came about 10 years before this guitar. The cleans will be running through a Gibson Super Gold Tone GA30RV. The dirty tones come from a Marshall JMP1C. <laughs> If you think you might be interested in owning this gorgeous Les Paul SG, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Trogleys, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S, or check out the eBay or Reverb listings. All right, Trogleys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Take care. <laughs>